For many years, the red supergiant Betelgeuse has delighted astronomers and captured the imagination of the general public. Located in the Orion constellation, this colossal star is in the final stages of its life. On a cosmic scale, it is a veritable ticking time bomb. Astronomers have long speculated about when and how it will explode in a spectacular supernova. But recent revelations from astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson have turned everything we thought we knew about this star upside down. According to Tyson, Betelgeuse is not just a dying star approaching its explosion. It may be something else entirely, something much more complex and mysterious. What makes Tyson's statement so provocative is not only its content, but also its timing. Over the past few years, Betelgeuse has been exhibiting strange behavior. From unexplained episodes of dimming to fluctuations in infrared radiation, this star defies prediction and baffles scientists. The most dramatic event occurred in late 2019 and early 2020, when Betelgeuse's brightness dropped by more than 60%. This sparked a flurry of speculation. Some scientists decided that a supernova was inevitable, while others believed that dust clouds or changes in the star's outer layers were to blame. But Tyson's point of view is radically different from both of these schools of thought. He suggests that we may not be observing a classic red supergiant at all, or maybe it's not even a single star. Tyson's main idea is that Betelgeuse may not be a single star, but part of a more complex system, possibly a double or even a triple. If this is confirmed, decades of astronomical dogma will be threatened. Star systems often turn out to be much more dynamic and interactive than previously thought. However, to suggest such a fundamental misunderstanding about one of the most studied stars in the night sky is an extremely bold statement. Tyson hints that recent spectral analyses and interferometry data point to anomalies that cannot be explained if Betelgeuse is considered a single star. These anomalies could be signs of gravitational disturbances characteristic of a system of several stars in close orbit with each other. Such a discovery could not only rewrite the history of Betelgeuse, but also change our overall model of the evolution and death of massive stars. Particularly striking is the hypothesis that Betelgeuse's brightness instability may not be caused by preparations for an explosion, but by orbital eclipses or tidal interactions with another hidden companion star. In that case, what we perceive as death throes of light may be nothing more than the reflection of the gravitational dance of two or more objects. The implications for astrophysics would be enormous. Entire sections of stellar evolution theory based on the idea of single stars may need to be rewritten. Another important part of Tyson's statement concerns distance. For a long time, Betelgeuse was thought to be about 642 light years from Earth. However, new calculations based on data from the European Space Agency's Gaia mission and confirmed by Tyson's analyses indicate a closer distance of about 530 light years. Although the difference seems insignificant, it has enormous consequences. If Betelgeuse is closer than previously thought, then all previous calculations of its size, mass, and brightness are wrong. The star may turn out to be significantly smaller and lighter, and therefore less likely to explode in the near future. Or, at the very least, its death may not happen at all as we expected. Tyson emphasizes that a smaller and closer Betelgeuse is no less interesting. On the contrary, it opens up a whole new set of questions. How did a star so close to Earth become such a mysterious object? How many other stars in our galaxy have we possibly misclassified? Tyson also questions the methods astronomers use to classify and track the behavior of stars. He points to the limitations of light observations, especially for variable stars, whose behavior can change quickly and unpredictably. According to Tyson, a more comprehensive multispectral approach, including X-rays, gamma rays, and gravitational waves, is needed to get a complete picture of what is happening. Betelgeuse may only be the beginning. If one of the brightest and most studied stars can elude accurate classification for decades, how many other stars are misleading us? The implications extend to space safety. 
If Betelgeuse did indeed explode in a supernova at its current distance, the consequences for Earth could be serious, ranging from radiation exposure to effects on the heliosphere and cosmic ray flux. Tyson's reassessment of the likelihood of an explosion in the foreseeable future is both reassuring and alarming. It is reassuring because it reduces the risk of disaster. It is alarming because it highlights how little we actually know about the stars closest to us. Tyson's statement forces us to rethink the psychological and cultural significance of stars. For decades, Betelgeuse has served as a symbol of the inevitability of astronomical processes, the life and death cycles of stars. But if all this turns out to be a myth or a misunderstanding, what remains of these metaphors? Tyson urges us to acknowledge not only our scientific mistakes, but also the distortions in our perceptions, the stories we tell ourselves about the universe and our place in it. Furthermore, if Betelgeuse is indeed a complex multi-star system, this speaks to the shortcomings of our detection methods. Are our instruments good enough? Are our simulations reliable? Tyson uses this moment as an opportunity to call for funding and development of the next generation of telescopes, both ground-based and space-based. Even in the study of gravitational waves, Tyson's hypothesis opens up new possibilities. Binary systems with massive stars are ideal candidates for generating gravitational waves. If Betelgeuse has a companion and they are in a close orbit, the system could be a source of detectable distortions in space-time. This is also important in the field of exoplanet research. A more complex understanding of stellar systems affects the interpretation of signals from exoplanets. What was previously thought to be a planet passing across a star's disk may actually be caused by a stellar companion or ejected stellar material. If we are wrong about Betelgeuse, we may be wrong about other objects as well. One of the most interesting consequences of Tyson's analysis is the role of dust and gas around Betelgeuse. If the brightness fluctuations are caused by external disturbances, this indicates a denser and more active environment than previously thought. This could be related to mass ejections caused by gravitational interactions. This environment could serve as a laboratory for studying how stars lose their shells and how interstellar dust forms and spreads. These are not trivial matters. They are the mechanisms by which the universe recycles matter. The changed perception of Betelgeuse is also a metaphor for the limits of observational science. For centuries, astronomy has relied on light as its primary source of data. But light is not always an honest witness. It can be distorted, blocked, reflected. Tyson reminds us that what we see is not always what is really there. Even the brightest objects can wear a mask. The tools of the future, from gravitational wave detectors to neutrino observatories, may be the only way to remove this mask. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Also, let us know in the comments what you think about the true nature of Betelgeuse, according to Tyson. We value your opinion. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.